It's pretty simple. Just do exactly as the car tells you. Set it right there against the button. Foot on brake. Push the button. Perfect. It's making magic happen. Right? When you have a smart key fob like this, you can usually operate your car without having to remove this key fob from your pocket, your purse, whatever it is, right? Just leaving it on your person. So I'm going to demonstrate something for the 2011 Infiniti M56. Let's get a little closer to the car. And usually you can just, you know, leave this in your pocket, or in this case I'll just hold it close enough and unlock your door and get in. But before doing that, I wanted to show something that might not be very evident because we're doing this in daylight. There's a light under here, a light under the door, uh, on the rear, pad of the rear part of the door handle. Or maybe, let me step back and see if I can show it any better. It responds to being close enough to, to the key fob being close to the car. So what I'm going to do right now is this. I'm going to bring the key fob a little closer. The light comes on. Pull the key fob back and the light should go off. It did go off. I'm gonna zoom in a little, uh, zoom in much, much further into the door handle and do the same thing I was doing again. You can see it in the reflection there. You can see my hand, right? <laughs> my arm. So, key fob closer, the light comes on, key fob away, and the light goes off. It should go off. Um, I should probably insta uh, insert a clip from like a nighttime video to show this a little better. I'm gonna do that right now. Nice. Anyway, so why am I even dwelling on this? When you have a key fob that's functional, battery's good and all that, when you get closer, having that light come on is one indicator that everything is communicating the, the way it should. All handshakes are being completed the way they should. And usually you can just push this button and unlock and get into your car. And likewise lock it, right? When you come to the trunk, you have a call button in the back. And and there you go. And likewise, you can operate your locks with the buttons on key fob like unlock, lock. And the trunk, and the trunk can be unlocked with the third button from the bottom. Well, you can't lock it, you have to do it manually. Okay, so let's get into the car. Again, smart key. And again, you don't have to insert this key into any slots or anything. Just go ahead and push a button and the car should start responding. Okay, so turn it off. Let's get out and lock it. Locked. Game over. So that's the ideal situation. And I'm gonna set that down. Now you might be pretty good a citizen and custodian of your car so you do have a spare key like I do this is my bunch of spares now I'm going to isolate the key for the M56 okay so here it is this is a key for the M56 the spare key one thing you'll notice is that well, again being a spare there's a chance that the battery's dead and you just never noticed so let's try the lock and lock button it's dead right Okay, and obviously the trunk is not going to work either. So, one of the indicators that your key fob is dying or dead, you usually get an indicator when it's about to die. But when it's already dead, this is what happens. You get closer, and this light does not turn on. Right? So, let us start to try to open, operate the button. The button is dead. It's unresponsive. And likewise, as you'd expect, nothing's going to happen in the rear either. But, this key fob is not completely useless. Let's flip it over. Flip it over. And there's a key insert over there. This is the other way, huh? Pull it this way. And the key.
keyblade out. On the bottom side, on the bottom side of you, of your trunk, you should have a hole over there. And this hole is where you insert this key and you're able to open your trunk. You should be able to. I was able to open mine. You can use the same insert in your driver's side door. Right here, you have a hole, keyhole. There you go, the door is unlocked. So that right there is one of the tests you can do whenever you're buying a car. Try the keys on the, the key inserts in the key fobs. Make sure that they can open both locks. That is one way to verify that the key is original to the car. It doesn't really matter. Or two, that none of your door locks, none of your locks were changed. See if you replace your trunk, you might end up inadvertently just changing the lock. Most people don't bother to move the lock over. And likewise, if you replace your door, most people, that's actually more difficult than the trunk. So most people will just end up leaving the other lock there. You want to be able to access your car when your key fob battery dies, right? Okay. Anyway, let's get inside here. You'll notice that shutting the car door does not make the car react in any way. And likewise, I have the key in pretty much the same position I had the other one on my lap somewhere and pushing the buttons, pushing the button, no response at all. It is pretty much dead. And actually, that tells you something over there. Let's let's get a little closer. So this is what happens inside oh on the screen. When I push the button right over here, this is what you see. Let's try to show both the button and the screen if we can do that. So pushing the button for the first time. Nothing happens and it says no key push it again well I mean it says no key but then it changes to something else just keep watching it shows the key fob against the button so it's pretty simple just follow the instructions really let's get here and we're gonna do what it tells us that is push the uh, the key fob against a button and that's what we're gonna do take your key fob place it against this start button you notice something something happens right now the screen has changed and it's showing you foot on brake you know push brake and then push the button so that tells you that it is responding like a normal key again remember this by itself has no result it just tells you no key however if a push if I place this key fob against this button over here it comes alive right yeah, so what happens at this point is that this key fob has your chip and the battery helps to amplify the signal from the chip and the antenna inside the car receives the, the signal being sent. With your battery dead in here, uh, the signal is not being amplified at all. However, if you bring that chip closer to the antenna, which is around here, it's going to sense that the smart key is in the car. In the older models, you would usually have to insert it into a hole in the, you know, the left re left knee bolster. But with these guys, this is enough to get it started. So it's pretty simple. Just do exactly as the car tells you. Set it right there. Then push the button like normal. Yeah, and you can even start the car, by the way. So turn it off. Again, follow the instructions, place the key against the button, and it's going to tell you to place your foot against the, you know, foot on brake, then push the button. So, foot on brake, push the button. Perfect. It's like nothing happened. Nothing was ever wrong. 
So yeah, there you go. This is your dead key. It's making magic happen, right? So turn it off, which is not exactly healthy, by the way. It should usually let your car run long enough to, to turn it off. So let's get out and obviously uh, the car is not going to be able to be locked with this fob or anything. At this point, just get your key blade, your insert again. I'm right handed, but somehow I can do this better with my left hand. I've done it plenty of times holding a camera. And to lock the door, just go kind of clockwise, I think. Yep. And that's it. Perfect. And that's the video. That's all I wanted to show you guys today. Well, sort of. That That's the main point of the video, but I also wanted to mention that you should make it a point to test your spare keys, make sure that they can do the duties whenever you actually expect them to work. The key fobs take a CR2025 battery, and it's pretty easy to replace those. Usually just open this casing and replace the battery. So that's it. Have your normal keys and may maybe you want to get fancy and sometimes you want to switch the keys so you can use a spare, let the other key uh, rest for a year. Personally, I usually do my best to replace the, uh, the batteries about once a year or maybe twice every three years, you know, maybe one and a half years. It depends on how long I end up keeping the cars. But yeah, that's typically what I do, but I have fallen behind a little bit on this key fob over here. so. That's all. Good luck and all the best with your vehicle.